For this last video, we will show you how to make the square peg and the square hole and get that put in. Uh, so we're going to make a new part for the square peg. And something unique about the square peg is there is a tool under the rectangle tool that will let you make a polygon. And when you set the sides to be three, don't hit done, you can drag out and make a triangle. And in our constraint tools, which we haven't fully discussed, we want to use the horizontal constraint to make this bottom line horizontal and dimension the bottom to top of the triangle to be one inch. Look on my check mark to finish my sketch and extrude three inches. There is your triangle peg. Now we need to go in and edit the peg board. Here is my peg board and I did two extrusions. I did one to make it solid and then I did one extrusion to cut out the holes. Um, so whichever one has the holes in it, extrusion one or two, it doesn't matter if you did it in one or two, we need to edit that sketch. And one unique thing about the sketch that I did is I used some extra dimensions to kind of help me out. Let's start with the height. I went and I placed a dimension here, which says it's over dimensioning. And I'm going to allow this just to create a reference dimension. And then what I did was I clicked on the bottom and this dimension, and it's already 1.5 because I you know, dimensioned it before, but I can click on this and divide by two. And so now if my board becomes four inches, this is going to be two inches. And I set this dimension over here to be equal to this one. So now whatever this one is, this one is also going to be. So they're going to be the same height up and down. Uh, along the top, you can see that I also took this top dimension and divided it by three because I'm dividing it in thirds. And this dimension is equal to D11, which if I hover over this one is not going to tell us. But here is the name D11. So instead of dividing by three, now I want to divide by four because I want to have it in fourths. So I have some room to put in my triangle. And again, I want to use that polygon tool with three sides to draw my triangle peg. And I want to use the um, collinear tool up here, not necessarily the horizontal, but the collinear tool is going to help two lines be the same line. So I'm going to take the bottom of the triangle and the bottom of the square. Because I can't dimension to the center point of the triangle uh, because it's a little bit of a different shape than the square is. So if I were to try to you know, put it in the center, you can see now this triangle is going to be way too big. But again, I'm going to dimension the triangle bottom to top and make that one inch. And now the only dimension that's missing is my dimension from the left or right edge to the center. And I want to make this the overall dimension divided by two. Or if you wanted to type in 5.75 divided by two, or if you wanted to punch it in a calculator and just type in the 2.875, any of those numbers all work. Uh, we're dividing it by two because this shape is going to be in the middle. Now, when you finish your sketch, it's not going to be there, and that's okay. We edited the sketch, but the feature doesn't know that you what you want to do with this thing that you put in there. So we need to right-click and edit the feature. Once we change the sketch, we need to change the feature to let it know, hey, this profile, click on the word profile, and click on your triangle so it knows to cut it out. Also... You notice my holes are set to through all instead of a distance, so they always go through, just in case we change that size. And so now, when I save this, Control S, or hit the save icon, when I go back, my drawing it looks a little bit messed up in my assembly, but as soon as I drag one of the pegs, they just pop back to the place where they're supposed to be. So I can go to my place tool, 
grab the triangle peg, and kind of like the uh, the square, the triangle constraint is going to be very.